Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Tarek, and I'm the CTO and president of Curio Learning. This is Ashley Lampson Clare. She's a writer for The Atlantic, Washington Post, New York Times, and Ed Surge. If you did a quick, quick Google search, you see that she's been an ambassador and activist for teachers around the world her entire career. And that's because she's a teacher. And the reason why she's not at the conference today is she's helping her students right now in the classroom, push through in the, in the last two weeks of school in Louisville, Kentucky. But her night job is the CEO and co-founder of Curio Learning with me. So let me tell you a little bit about how, how Ashley and I met. So she sat down with me, someone had connected us, and we sat down for coffee, and she said to me, I want to create an app for teachers where they can share ideas and collaborate. I said, okay, well, what's your favorite app? And she pulls out a big brick black flip phone, just about like this, with no screen, and says, I don't use apps. My question to her was probably what you're all thinking, why the hell do you want to build one? Because the reason why she's a rebel and going against the grain and saying, I don't want to use a smartphone, I don't want to use an app, is because she feels like, in a lot of instances, EdTech software, uh, most of the time, is not built with teachers in mind from a teacher level. And she wanted to build something that was teacher-driven, that was built around current teacher behavior. So we started with design thinking, and we started to work and solve through the problems, focusing on professional development with teachers K through 12. And what we learned was that teachers waste time in workshops and on applications that aren't relevant or engaging to their real needs in the classroom, and that administrators needed modern tools and, and better data so they can understand their current teachers' needs. And then lastly, we looked at the current teacher behavior. So teachers are doing professional development just like all of us in our areas of expertise on their own by going to Facebook groups, Pinterest searches, Twitter lists, adding stuff to Dropbox, Google Docs, WhatsApp groups, and beyond. And so we modeled something around just that. So Curio is an app that helps teachers discover, curate, and collaborate on new ideas and strategies in the classroom. Ideas and strategies hand in hand is the focal point. So similar to Pinterest, it's a visual organizer. There's no learning curve. We've tested this with teachers, and within 30 seconds, they figured out completely how to use Curio. So I'm just going to walk you through some design screens of the product. The onboarding process takes about 30 seconds. You set up a user account. Pick your areas of interest. So here we've got biology and learning. Then you pick an expertise. This is one of our favorite tiny features of Curio. Ashley's an English teacher for juniors, specifically creative writing. But her focus is on ed tech. So she's not only a subject matter expert in English, but she's an expert in ed tech as well. And so this is an opportunity for her to connect and shine with others by having a hashtag that represents her interests outside of the classroom. So when you land on the home page, once you've logged into Curio, you've got branded, discoverable channels. Let's take Huffington Post, for example. If I was a user and I clicked on that, I might see 10 recently curated articles or thought leader pieces um, curated by Huffington Post directly. Um, so let's see. Let's go back. So if you look at the top navigation menu, it's very simple. There's a giant search bar across the screen, Ashley's picture, as that's her avatar for her profile, and then one simple menu button, which if you click, you'd see that big purple menu pop up. It's extremely easy to navigate. And you can search by categories, find people, whether it's through your area of expertise or people in your city, other teachers you want to connect with. And then I get down to Ashley's profile, a little bit about her, the school she's at, city she's in, a light bio, and then her area of expertise. And below that, we have stacks. Stacks are a collection of cards. Consider it kind of a visual folder. So within a stack are a group of pieces of content, what we call a card. A card can be a single thing, a YouTube video, or it could be an entire strategy with pictures, videos, links, Google Docs, Dropbox, and beyond, all curated together. And one of the most important pieces of this is the ability, if I scroll down, to collaborate with others. I can get a thumbs up from a teacher who's just showing some love, or I can pose a direct question about, hey, what would you do better about this section of my idea with my PLC so I can get strong feedback from anywhere in the world? So let's talk about market size. There's 3.9 million teachers in the US K through 12. 56 billion is spent on professional development. That's not including salaries. That breaks down to $18,000 per teacher per year. When we asked teachers, over 1,000, what they got out of their $18,000, most of their answers were crusty hummus in a gymnasium with some RC cola. You can laugh at that. So we've got, a, we've got two parts of, of uh, we've got actually five revenue streams. But one of the things that's important to Ashley and I both is that it's free forever for teachers, for forever, not for six months, but for forever. There's a few limitations in the future additional features of Curio that an individual teacher could pay for if they wanted to tap into those. But honestly, they could use Curio and be exactly happy with what they have for free. 
The $8 model is for, is for innovative administrators or superintendents who want to give Curio to all their teachers with the ability of having upgraded features and a data dashboard that helps them understand activity usage, as well as what things are teachers talking about, maybe not in the classroom, but on Curio, related to hot topics such as diversity or immigration. So if 5% if, if of our total uh, addressable market, and that's not even honestly the real TAM, but the one we focus in on, um, tap in over the next three and a half years, we can bring in between 75 to $80 million in revenue, and that's with only 30% of this 200,000 um, being paid subscribers. This is our, some of our team here in terms of leadership. Um, we've been able to bootstrap the company 100% up to now. We just started in August. We're probably one of the earliest uh, companies here, but we've built something the size of Pinterest by tapping into grant funding, and the product launches in June. So right now, we're looking for an initial and then seed A partner for our next raise. And in June, we plan to go live um, and with an expectation of around 20,000 users by the end of August. We're the first mover to market. We've got teacher credibility and district credibility because our price is low, especially if it's free. And it's all about high engagement and high relevance. And really, our mission comes down to allowing teachers to break through curriculum norms and teach like a rebel. So thank you all so much for your time. Hope you've enjoyed the conference as much as I have. I've got some handouts in the back, and I'd love to speak with anyone if you all have questions. Thank you.